I, I have had like great conversations with him. Yeah. Like Coquit, you know, those days where you're like, oh my God. Where he's lucid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden, like one time me and Andrew, it was late. And Andrew took a picture of me in the hallway because uh -huh. he goes lean up against the wall. And I'm like leaning and we're not dating or anything like that. It's just I had all comedy store shit. On, like one right. of those nights where you just this, yeah. like you steal their sure. stuff because yeah. it got merch. a little cold. And so I now you just leaned against the wall and all the pictures. And Andrew's like, I like how the hallway looks. And when we looked at the picture, you uh -huh. just see Robert peeking out. <laughs> Oh, just half of them. Nobody's in the hallway but him. It's the best picture. All you see is this green suit. And they're like, Between dimensions. <laughs> when people Coming ask in. me, is the comedy store haunted? I send them that picture. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's you, a perfect. Yeah. What do you think? That should be the cover photo for this. For, <laughs> just him the thumbnail. Leering in. Uh, are we waiting for Steve or are we start? We we're, can we're, start. We're, we're rolling. Oh, we're rolling. Have we been... On Let this me whole tell time? you something. Listen, no, Mike. Just that last story. I have some apologies to When make. you're here, we just yeah. jump right into Good. it because That's how we I like go, it. we like kamikaze. Yes. And, uh, you know, I'm excited. I think I hear a little chaos, which means I think, I think our, uh, our great guest our may guest be here. Honors. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. Thank you oh, for filling him. it. Oh, it's just. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. I love this. There he is. Get him Sorry, off the stage so and throw him down the steps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get him off stage. Oh my God. You're not a stuntman? I <laughs> you you just wanted to yeah. throw, throw you down the steps. <laughs> I thought you were a stuntman. <laughs> He did that, and then I throw Fat James under the bus. I was like, throw Fat James down the stairs. He'll love it. <laughs> hey, does this mean I'm one of the guys? Because <laughs> they're taking him out <laughs> on <the stretcher. laughs> I'll do it again. I can't feel my legs. <laughs> he, would, he would let you do it. Oh, of course. Fat James would have totally let you do it. Oh, every time he's like, how come you didn't tell, you the, tell the audience that story about when I drove you crazy? I'm like, you want that? Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Please. <laughs> as soon as he gets to the bottom of the steps, they're like, uh, James, we need you to park some cars right, right away. <laughs> my foot hurts, God, but Rest his soul. <laughs> Rest his soul. You I don't want to tell that pickle feet story on stage, but I would feel bad. What do you mean? Maybe you can Hold tell it here. Hold on a second. This is the Comedy Store podcast. We have to introduce it. Oh, we're right. doing it real fast. We already, we have Mike Black here. We have the great Steve Simone, and we're excited. Go ahead, Steve. What's the pickle feet? You know, <laughs> you got to tell it now. There's no way. There's no way you're getting I, out, of out of it now. I'm not letting you out of that. I'm not. All right. <laughs> I, I'm trying to be as sensitive and, so you guys knew I sometimes, James was my roommate. Right. Yeah, Describe him a little bit. Because this is the thing. We got in trouble for this. We talk a lot about people that nobody knows. Yeah. We right. do the inside baseball thing a yeah. lot. So talk, tell us a little bit about him as a, as a human. Okay. He was a character. This building attracts characters, right? Absolutely. Yes. And he was one of the absolute greatest. He was a, uh, God rest his soul. He was a former Elvis impersonator. He had a two lot years of in a row, Two years in a row, number one Elvis impersonator. Oh, yeah. I did not know yep. that. I knew he was an impersonator. I didn't know he got of number Modesto. one. Of no, no, no. He went to Graceland and got it two <laughs> years in a row. He said Modesto. And, and then he went through a, a horrible art when Ari did that joke about him. Oh, it was tremendous. Okay. I can't. There's so much mean <laughs> stuff. I don't want anything it. mean. Comics can it's be mean. mean. It's a mean world, and that's no, what brings not. us but here. We're right. only you know, mean <laughs> like to people we love. So Isn't James was what five? He was like five foot four, three hundred and thirty pound. Ex El recently divorced ex Elvis impersonator. Yes, because he put on weight due to the divorce. He was wearing a lot of hats, <laughs> but he <laughs> yeah. he didn't need a hat because he kept the Elvis pompadour. <laughs> His hair was right, tough. and I used to describe him to people. I go, imagine dice. Eight, 1988 Dice Pompadour. It's Dice walking by a carnival mirror. <laughs> Dicks, dice on your 600 pound life. Yeah. Like that. Because yeah. remember, Andrew Andrew would give him the fingerless gloves sure. because he, was, he worked the parking lot. Here. Yeah. Right. And he didn't want him touching his stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Chips oh, Keebler. Why did he call him Chips Keebler? I, I have forget. no idea because it was he his show business. So name. many. Nicknames. I'm no detective. <laughs> but the sure? name Chips Keebler for a 330 pound man. <laughs> Not that hard to figure okay. out. Which is also amazing because yeah. Tracy Morgan nicknamed him Cookie. <laughs> so <laughs> Tracy Morgan would call him Cookie and Dice would call him Chips Keebler. I never made that connection until I'm Me like, Me either. Oh. It takes a fat guy to spell it out to you guys. Like, Let me translate. I'll, I'll tell you and how I he got that. How, <laughs> yeah, he I love cookies and Chips Keebler, all yeah. that, but uh, I didn't think of it. Let me make sure I'm still not recording. I had such a fun set. I know. You were You're crushing wearing a wire this whole time. By. Dude, even Bobby Lee complimented me. I'm like, oh my you goodness. You crushed. But yeah. also, how great is it that Bill Burr opened the I, I'm, I was like, how? Uh, 
They already got. I like when that happens because I feel like the audience has already gotten their money. Yeah, worth. they're like, what is what? Yeah, I'm like, next? oh, you don't think this is the greatest place ever? Yeah. I already told Eleanor about this, but uh, Netflix is a joke is happening this week. That's oh, really? Crazy. So, oh, so that that's why all the cool people are here. <laughs> it honestly feels like comedy Christmas. Yeah. Like, I feel so excited it's to really be here. Like, I can't believe I'm allowed to be here. Norm yeah, like, normally I look at stuff yeah. like this from, like, a mm, sort of, yeah, really? I don't know about this sort of vibe. Oh, I know, but, but it is fun. Like, it's more fun. It's so fun. Now that I'm fun. here yeah. in the vibe, I feel like everyone's having a good time and, 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 and enjoying it. And that the know. comedy store is part of it. It kind of, like, my favorite thing about Montreal was the hang. Of like, course. Like, it yeah. felt like summer camp for comedians. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And like, I remember being up there and then you have your comedy store family there. And honestly, I felt like I was an outlaw biker. And I'm like, yeah. They're, yeah, oh, now we're taking out comedy stores, taking over this. Right? <laughs> we're, 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 we're all wearing our comedy store hoodies. <laughs> like, what's up, nerds? Like, it was great. But now it's like that summer camp vibe, but it's at your home. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it feels like the comedy store is throwing a party. Yeah, and yeah. you just, and like these weeks, you never know who's going to pop in to mm -hmm. work out. So it's just like, I remember I, I had a, two nights ago I had a spot and they were like, hey, uh, you, I know I told you this time, but take your time because <laughs> there's, there's a <laughs> yeah. lot of people coming in to work out their stuff. And so I was bumped back probably like 45 minutes, almost an hour. Who who yeah. popped in? I, I think it was Burr. I think it was Ross. I think it was, you know, they're all doing all these things around town. So, cool. so it's just how to work them out, especially Jeff yeah. Ross with the um, roast the jokes. Roast, yeah. yeah. It's so hard. I'd ha we had to follow uh, the other night. Nikki Glazer was doing hers. And so Steph Tolov went on after. And then it's like, don't you have any good jokes for the roast and we're like this is our act <laughs> yeah. okay? and then i went on after step i mean it was it was a fun or audience but oh, again it was like they saw all these like stars so they're like who the fuck yeah. are you you know I by the time that, i though. came on yeah, but i feel hard. like there's no pressure on me then because like remember that there right. yeah, used like to be i like to win them over though at least like <laughs> yeah i could when get I, when I bomb them like i don't blame yeah. you i shouldn't be doing this either like, <laughs> <laughs> i feel terrible like, Listen, like, you're know. just confirming all the thoughts going on in here i know it's wrong yeah, yeah I get I'm it. like yeah Potluck on Monday was nuts. It was like yeah. four national headliners, and then yeah. Don brings me up, and it was like okay. Next fine. week's gonna be like that too. Yeah. I'm hosting. Come on by. Oh, that's, yeah, that's cool. awesome. Yeah, I'm excited. That's very is this cool. the first time you're hosting open mic? No, no, I've done it a million times, but this is I did it last year for the festival. So that's and it so was awesome. insane. It was insane. It was one of the best. Like I was just like, okay, I'll just sit back here. You know, I don't. <laughs> I think I had Chappelle, Chris Rock, Jimmy Carr, oh Leslie Jones. Uh, oh God, I know there was more. Maybe Jeff Ross. Jeff. It was just like one of the. It was like, oh my God. No, I in don't a way, even... it's kind of easier because you don't really have much of a call. <laughs> and then on there's who always goes like up or any of that. It's just well, obviously you're going up. But there's know. always somebody on the list. Like how long you think? I'm like. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you're paying any attention. Yeah, uh, yeah. no concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, but I'm on the I list. I brought some people. Uh, how, did you see my name on the list? I how did. long do you think he'll do? <laughs> well, that was one of the coolest. Should I stick around? No. Oh, well, <laughs> you mean in L.A. with this dream <laughs> or tonight? <laughs> Forever? Uh, <laughs> I would get some soup and a blanket. <laughs> yeah, and, you know. Tag out, tag out. One of the coolest lessons about working the door here was the bigger the star in general, the more humble they were. I like, think so, yeah. I remember once sitting at the OR back door and Chris Rock came in with Rick Rubin mm -hmm. and he like introduced himself. Hey, I'm Chris. And I was like, I know what's going on here. We know. <laughs> right? So sweet, so kind, mm -hmm. so awesome. But then there would be like, somebody doing a bringer room show up in the belly room and they'd come by with an entourage like like Milton Berle in, in Pee Wee's Big Adventure like all these people following I'm like I love that story and I'm like whoa 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 I need to see everybody's ID yeah. and they're like uh, I'm on the list bro I'm performing tonight yeah. these are my guests I'm like dude Chris Rock yeah. What are you doing? But, hey, come on, be nice. It's so silly. It's so simple to be nice. Just be and nice. people just love to. A guy, I watched it happen last night. A kid was working the door and he goes, Hey, were you already up there? Because it was the um, roast battle. Yeah. And then the guy just went and walked by him. Ugh. And the kid, he's new here. And yeah. he went, Excuse me? Like, 
<laughs> he got Good that. For him, and man. then he chased him down the hall. He got security to watch yeah. and he chased him down the hall. And, they, and the guy goes, I was already up there. He goes, so you couldn't say that to me? Good you for couldn't him. talk to me? I'm a human being. Yeah, yeah. Like you just shit on me and then went upstairs. And it, he was part of this entourage yeah. that was doing. Uh, you know what? It's really the I saddest thing. I was so thing. angry at him. It's like it's easy to get angry. But like how sad do you have to be where you're like, this will yeah. kill them. You know well, what I mean? And like, also, yeah, it's a bro yeah, that, that's like that a trauma response. It's like not, happy people don't do that. Right. No. And they're not comics. They're mm -hmm. trying to be, but they're rappers. Oh, and he was so rude yeah. to to the cat. And I was like, really, yeah. dude? You don't mm -hmm. even belong if you mm -hmm. want to get technical. I would never walk into a music club where you worked out or whatever and yeah. just, you know, be yeah. like, you know who I am? Tonight I waited in line. And security I'm was like, no, dude, you. you're allowed to. And I'm Steve, like, I didn't want to be. I can't. <laughs> That's you know, too nice. There's a thing yeah. too well, nice. <laughs> plus, I had a friend with me and I wanted to make sure they knew my friend. So then they, you know what I mean? Like, hey, this is my buddy. And, Got but it. But we already, it was, we did it twice. So yeah, maybe that was, <laughs> that really is true. I did it twice. <laughs> Name dropping that you got friends. I yeah. get it. <laughs> I have a friend. <laughs> That's so funny. That's Mike, Mike funny was one of my sad. first friends in I LA. I know it. So we yeah. all worked together. We were oh, working, yeah. working. Oh, yeah. I wasn't doing comedy. Yep. I'm so, so yeah. proud of. The last time I was here, you had fans show up. They're like, is that one oh my God. That was the best Steve, feeling. I'm like, that made me cry. I was like, what? Yeah, yeah these so people sweet. saw you in Vegas. Oh, and my buddy, Big Mike, you have to meet him. He saw yeah, you that's open the for guy, Andrew. Yeah. In, and he was like, she's the funniest comedian I've ever in seen. In Florida, right? Yeah. yeah I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. she's my friend. <laughs> so maybe I could introduce you. <laughs> but it is weird, though, to think of it like how we would be so miserable around here. Remember when they made you Steve the manager? That was a fun time. I'm and all out of love. I was just <laughs> yeah. listening to Easy the Easy 101. <laughs> yeah. The quiet storm. I, I would mean, lie I would see off to go do that. <laughs> like I, I would just would... eat peanut M and M, say like... Hail Marys, and listen to the smooth sounds of Christopher <laughs> you, you Cross. Have that that Mr. Mom moment. Can I have a moment <laughs> alone? And Kenny, tries to it's take time to get blanket. rid of the whoopee. <laughs> yeah. Next thing you know, you'll be sprung out on bed sheets. Like, what? <laughs> Michael Keaton was line. so good. What a great movie! That Another was. comedy story. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. But, but that's what I'm saying. Like I, I can remember running into the office trying to get change, and you're stuck in this dumb job. Uh, you know, you because know, I just wanted to be a comedian. Exactly. And but you I, wanted to be like, part of the store. Yeah, I wanted to be so bad, but I was the and cousin it was like Oliver. They were making you do everything but cousin be a comedian. Oliver? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, Oliver. Oh I, God, yeah. I did every single job here. Every yeah. single one. I think I did too. Do you think though Including that that made you better? I think this. I think in a beautiful way, this city ripped my ego out mm -hmm. of me. Oh. Yeah. And that's to me, I think humility is everything. It's it's the secret to happiness. Yeah. And like, uh, I do a bit sometimes. I didn't do it tonight. I'm miserable. But but you, I on. talk about how miserable LA is because everybody moves here to prove they're special. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. right, right. You know what right, I mean? Like yeah. everybody moves here with the thought bubble. I'll show you. <laughs> I'll show you all. One day I'm gonna have a billboard and a TV show, and you're gonna be like, "Oh, you want to get on my guest list? I don't know." <laughs> you know, and all that energy is tough to be around. And I know for sure when I moved here. I wanted to become rich and famous and like, I felt so guilty that my parents loved me and I wanted to buy him a beach house. And <laughs> I just, you know, like, hey, thanks for all those Christmases. Like, How dare I, you try to do something where it takes this function and you have yeah. a good functioning family at home. <laughs> but uh, but this city, it, it ripped me like, I mean, it took me eight years to get past here. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, like, I, I, I think uh, honestly, because of like taking those jobs, she see you in a different light. It, it, mm -hmm, that's yeah. the hard part because you want to get in and then you're like, oh, okay, I'll just help do this. But yeah. when you were a manager, you were seen as this other. So once you became the door guy, it was a whole oh, different. So, so much easier. So much less yeah. pressure. And with my, yeah, because I was like, it felt like I was diffusing a bomb. I'm like, right. Mitzi could see a light bulb out and she's like, you're banned for life. And I'm like, <laughs> right. I just, just want to tell jokes. <laughs> I got nowhere else to go. Yeah. But the worst. <laughs> yeah. I remember I was making Every 80 se for every <laughs> $2. <laughs> yeah. That's all I was making as Listen, a manager. You guys are going to have to Google it. All right. Yeah. Uh, Gen Z is like, like nerds <laughs> two dollars is the greatest one though oh, better off dead. Um, so good uh, uh, we all are better off dead and uh, no, i'm kidding <laughs> but
But yeah, it's, it's, you kill. <laughs> <laughs> she wa- she wanted me to manage, and again, I don't want to be a comic. Yeah. So, but I definitely didn't want to be a manager. That was the chopping you block. You made job. no money. Yeah. I, okay, this you is made how... more money as a waitress. I made more money as a door club. guy, and you know <gasps> there was no money because I was getting seventy five bucks a shift, and sometimes I'd get here as a noon. manager. Yes. Oh, Maron, these were the terrible years. I apologize. And sometimes it would be 14 hour day. <laughs> oh, God. We'd do that. And there that's, were times, and like I didn't have a, a car. Lot. And sometimes if nobody could give me a ride home, whatever I made that night would go, half of it would be gone on a taxi because it was yeah. before oh, Uber. My God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the second I was like, I just put me on the door, man. Just get me out. Well, you're going to have to showcase again to be on the door. I'm like, I don't care. Just I'll get me out of this showcase. job. Yep. And then, then they. <laughs> As soon as I stepped down, they started to pay the managers hourly and give them health benefits. And I'm like, why does this always happen to me? <laughs> you were the gateway. Yeah. But again, it, uh, nicotine. she was like, and I hate to say it like that, but they were using you like, OK, he's a comic. I'll do anything. Right. So it's like we could we could pay him this because he just wants to be part of it. And yeah, you were also I, good we at were, the different jobs that you were doing. Which doesn't help. Yeah, I wanted like, to do right, well. Right. It's dependable. Uh, yeah, I wanted you know? to do well. I mean, could, I I became the manager because the manager at the time was passed out in the walk-in fridge after yeah. he did all the whippets. That's the one I fired. Literally, yeah. I fired him, and then he goes, "You can't fire me. You're a waitress." And I go, "Watch." <laughs> I did. <laughs> That's I, great. I called Mitzi, and I was like, what Gee, a "He's great out." Power move. What Watch. a piece of shit. <laughs> but it was yeah. so. Sweet. And on a fat Tuesday, he did it. You know how much Ugh. whipped cream we need on a fat Tuesday. <laughs> Oh my goodness! They put this it place on Coca-Cola. So crazy, like people wouldn't know. The comedy store now, thank God, it's like it's it's getting what it deserved all along. Yeah, yeah. but those years were so crazy. Like, I still can't believe everything. I can't believe what's happened to me. I can't believe what's happened to the club. It's been such a surreal ride. Yeah, and honestly, I'm so grateful I did all those stinky jobs because number one, I'm grateful for anything that happened. Right, right, like right. the best thing that happens when none of your dreams come true, the littlest things bring you joy. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, seriously, I'm like, <laughs> that's a bumper sticker if ever there was one. <laughs> but it's the truth. I'm like, oh, yeah. sweet ice cream. Like, I don't, because, yeah, I really thought you needed to be rich and famous and all this stuff. Now, back when you were a door guy, yeah, what kind of stage time were you getting? Three minutes a week. No other shows. No other shows. Wow. No now, there hat was, tricks. No opening. No, the no main opening little spots. <laughs> now there was a time when the club was doing such little business. Do you remember when Mitzi moved? We had potluck one night a week, and then there was about a year, six months where we had it three nights. Three a week. nights a week potluck. Ooh. Sunday, yeah. Monday, and so Tuesday. Then, I remember then that. That, that was then nice. you would then you're up to nine minutes. Do you remember the poetry yeah. we had for a little bit? Uh, with the bells. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I will say this. I'm not mentioning any names, but I remember when I moved out, I always loved stand-up, but I always used stand-up comics as like samurai. <laughs> like in the, and yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. you know what? I want to do that, but I don't want to get my head kicked in. I knew <laughs> right, every yeah. comedian had to eat it yeah, to get yeah. through it. Yeah. In yeah. every facet, no money, bombing, figuring it out. And I'm like, Sleeping get, in the parking lot. Yeah. yeah. Sleeping and in the OR, it. main room, whatever. You know, that's yeah. funny. All three of us were kind of like that about where we danced around it a lot. Like in college, I did theater and improv and stuff. Like That's that. right. And my friends were like, gee, are you going to do stand-up? I wanted to you do know. it so bad. And I did. Any chance I got, I did it. But I, my game plan moving out here, I was like, I get a normal job. I could take screenwriting classes. And I was like, then I'll go do Second City or Groundlings because I want it like. Yeah. Yeah. But I was like, if I could be a comedian, that's the greatest thing ever. But I can't right. do that. But maybe but I could get a writing job. Get out here because you want a contest in yeah, Philadelphia? Yeah, 100% so. Yep. And that's Polly. And Polly also said something interesting. Those years we talk about with the dead years. Yeah. Uh, whatever you want to call them. The dark <laughs> um, times. The dark times. Because <laughs> yeah. the inmates were running the asylum. Right. And there was no. But Mitzi's health was declining. Yeah. So the club was going with Near her. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And so the revival was slow to come. And she saw it coming, though. Oh, totally. I, I remember her saying, like, in 03, we did a big campaign for all the famous people to come back. Oh, yeah. And she got pissed. She was like, this isn't a place to showcase stars. She was like, this is a star a nursery. Development. Yeah. yeah. And I remember her saying, tell me, she goes, they don't get it. She was like, this is the most talented group of comedians I've ever had. And she said, my babies, when they're ready, there's going to be lines down the block to see them. She knew it. Yeah. yeah. She knew every. And like when I think about all the jobs or whatever, what a small price to pay to be like, I feel like I'm family here. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like I'm allowed to, I'm staying at Polly's house. Right That's amazing. Now. 
and that wouldn't have happened. Like Peter, Peter and Scotty came to go see me in La Jolla last month. Isn't that amazing? That's awesome. And I was like, and Peter looked at me. He goes, "What are you talking about?" He goes, "Your family." And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like I had Peter, Scotty, and Paulie in Austin when dude, I was headlining. I was like, "What is awesome. happening that's, right now?" <laughs> yeah, it's the great. Like, yeah. it's worth. It was worth. It was so everything. crazy. Yeah, yeah. It was worth all of it. It was <laughs> worth all the heartbreak it was worth all the disappointment yep. it was because it was shaping me and maybe i would have been a dick like everybody else in this <laughs> yeah, town right, right. you know what i mean but now i just go oh man what a great gift it is just to be alive yeah and to but, be around for all this can we talk about one thing real quick what if paulie gets the richard uh simmons is that oh i oh, think can i can i just say he's gonna fuck around and get an Oscar for that. A hundred percent. I I can't. Every time I think of it, I'm like, I was talking to Dice the other day. I go, he's going to fuck around. Get an Oscar. He, and he's going to get this part. I hope he and gets he's going to get an Oscar. Yeah, because he's got layers to him yeah. people don't realize. Absolutely. And people don't people don't jump in on it. Like, oh, they're it's going to be the coolest thing ever. And because, I really don't it's... think anyone else can play that. No, Nobody. me either. Because like Richard Simmons, you heard who he wants. Yeah. Tom Cruise. That's not going to yeah, happen. Not... But it also and, wouldn't be good. And it wouldn't be good. Yeah, it's just, it's such a uh, miscast. Yeah. Whereas Polly is like, as soon as I heard it, same. it was, honestly, it was like when I heard Robert Downey Jr. was going to play Iron Man, it was the same I sort remember, of I remember getting I was, the phone call from my yeah. client. No. Steve, uh, uh, like, are, are you sitting know, down? You, are you sitting down? <laughs> I don't know if I you don't. understand. <laughs> uh, so are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Thing ever. I would have never thought of that, but I like what you're saying. And it's, it's the exact same sort of vibe where I was like, Perfect. Oh, that's the exact right person. Right. And I had never thought of either of them for those parts. But when I heard it, I was like, yeah, you know, what, fucking work. you know what Tony Robbins calls that? What? The elusive obvious. Oh, yes. Boy. Ooh, that's a really yeah. good way of putting it. It's yeah. yeah. You were like, oh my <laughs> yeah, peanut butter and jelly. It's like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You're like, of course, this is so good. <laughs> Why does it equate to food? That's everything great. in my brain. It just does. It it's just, just it's does. Just God food family. That's all. Peanut butter and chocolate. Here. What? Yeah. You, just, you should great. have heard me at California Pizza Kitchen this afternoon, very that specifically ordering. Yeah, I was like. I was like, you guys don't have sandwiches anymore. So what I need is a very thin pepperoni pizza, heavy sauce. Not so heavy that it's going to make it floppy, but heavy enough to where I can actually taste it. And the lady looked at me like I was insane. But I'm doing like, that now. Okay. I'm listening. Like, <laughs> I'm, Steve, I'm and listening. She brought it out and she was like, is, she actually did this. She goes, is this what you wanted? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes. And it was terrible. Oh. It was still. Yeah, it's, I don't. Awful. I was. Who eats a cow? I didn't think it was still. A thing. I thought it you were going to use that as a. And then I thought you were going to pull something out of your bag and fold it, and make a sandwich. <laughs> I I still <laughs> folded the slices. Yeah. Because I'm not an animal, but right. it was still no good. Mike. Wow. I knew Mike was no joke when we went. <laughs> first time we went out to. You eat, mean food wise? He right. Pulled out a bottle of. He brings his own Tabasco. <laughs> I do, I do. Wait, it's Beyonce? Like your, this was George, at Farmer's George, Market, George, right? They're a good band to the bone. Like, you have a, <laughs> you have a briefcase <laughs> handcuffed to your wrist, like Jake and Elwood Blues. Which one do I feel <laughs> like today? <laughs> you know, like, but yeah, we, I think it was, was Farmer's like, Market. 100% so. And wow. we, we did that, uh, the Brazilian barbecue. Oh, and you brought all the your meats own? on swords. Yep. I was mm -hmm. like, this calls for <laughs> Tabasco. <laughs> they didn't have any? No. We have Cholula. Watch this. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, we don't have Tabasco. We have Cholula. Fine. <laughs> that's, that's exactly how I what? react. I hate it. I hate it. He Cholula hates it. So and he much. just turns his back and then he looks like a sniper. <laughs> <point on himself. laughs> like the, the eyes just go to business. And he's like, <laughs> what kind <laughs> of people? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's it. What kind of trash? They have a sauce there. I forget the name of the place, the Brazilian we, at, at Farmer's Market. It's the only one there. Oh, yeah. It's still there, right? Caballeros or something. Something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cabanaros. I just walked through there the other day and I was that like, oh, I remember best. all these places. But I, I used to go there spot. all the time with Freddie Soto. I went there and I didn't well. have Tabasco with me and I was like, what kind of uh, hot sauce do you guys have? And they had these little sad red and green cups. And I was like, just keep, keep those. <laughs> and then I went to the fancy cook market there Go on where Tabasco is like $8 a bottle. And I was like, it, it needs to be done. It's <laughs> this an investment is, this is what I'm doing. It's a joy investment. It's an investment. I was like, I'll, I'll keep it in the car for when I need I it. I don't think I never I don't like Tabasco sauce. I don't like hot. I love hot oh, sauce. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well then you're missing yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, I have a collection am I missing of hot out? sauces. Or am if, I keeping my sinuses in check? 
It's not about your sinuses, though. It's yeah, about your mouth. Yeah, but it's going to open them up and crack in half. No. You have to pay the price for beauty. Beauty, beauty is, is pain. pain. You're yes. not wrong. <laughs> you know, <it's> like, <laughs> we'll be right back to the comedy. So it was like, three, if we just two, ended there, the show a mazzle. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> I never heard that expression until my brother told me that. What? Once. When he gave me this, like, because he's a dentist, it was like these bleach trays to make your teeth white. And I'm like, ah, oh, it's burning. And he was like, yeah. beauty is pain. <laughs> <laughs> that was my friend's store. She called it beauty is pain. And, uh, they that was the name of her online. store? Mm-hmm. Wow. wow. Beauty is pain. What did they sell? Uh, they did everything. Clothes. They did. Wow. I think it was mostly clothes. Yeah, yeah. Because the, the one girl, the girl, a her partner, and stuff. <laughs> does like um, share stuff, Lady Gaga. She's oh, done okay. stuff. Like she does all that beat it. So like, it really is. Oh, wow. Specific. Like beauty yeah, is yeah, pain yeah, yeah. sort of stuff. Like you're yeah. not getting out of this without a crowbar <laughs> right. sort of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Maybe she, it'll like me now. <clears throat> like, she's made a lot of jackets. Not oh. this one. This one's no. This she would tremendous. take this. This is this a is... Robert William Evervaya. Always oh. funny. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Steve gets no, sensitive. I actually don't know who's Alberto Mardoni. Oh. There you go. I got this from Stephen Kramer Glickman. And okay. Stephen, I hope I your mom say. is doing great. She had a kind of a scare, but okay. um, she's out of the hospital. Oh, well, good, good, good. And she's doing good now. So just in case Does that she's mean watching, you have to give the jacket back. I might. Okay. It might. Like, I need Depen- the it depends on the insurance situation. It's like he may need to hawk it. I don't I know. Need that. We got to bring Mike to Philly for an Eagles game. He shows up in oh, that jacket. In Are you kidding? They'll, they'll make like, him the mayor. Yeah, like a gentleman. You, you'll be like, I would love oh, to go. They might think you're. A, I wouldn't a understand anything that was happening, but I'd have a great time. I remember in, in football or just Philly. In in general, just across really? the board. Yeah, I remember when Mike, the late great Mr. John Panette, brought yeah. you to Springfield, Delaware County. Wow. Once. Yes, and I remember you calling me. You were like, "This is like the place where the hobbits live." Like, what did she <laughs> yeah, say? Yeah, because you had shown me that magazine. What of, it was like Philadelphia Weekly, uh-huh. and oh. it had, on the cover. Everyone looked like a hobbit, but in a business suit. I don't. And, and I was like, What's wrong this is, with you? What do you mean we look this like is hobbits? Fantastic. <laughs> it was, yeah. There's a, there but was you a, said there was like a joy there, right? Yeah. I asked for Tabasco to place, and they were like, Oh, look at the big shot. <laughs> oh, Mr. Highfalutin. Excuse us. Where are you from, jerk off? Yeah. <laughs> like, is there good enough for you? <laughs> Well, I, only, I was only stabbed once, <laughs> so I feel like I, I was doing okay. They must have liked you. Yeah, they really liked you. Uh, but wait, where did you eat? Did you go into South Philly or Philadelphia? Where no, proper? We, we, he was wisely kept us pretty much at his place. I was going to say, I could see Panette going there. to everywhere. Oh, to he eat. probably yeah, yeah. Stuff. He, yeah, he he had stuff delivered a lot of the time, and it was like wow. really good food. The guy, Top of the line. The guy knew what he was doing. How uh, long did you open for him? For about two years on and wow. off. Wow. I got what a great one. He fired me once over a misunderstanding on money where I was like, I I hated to do it, but I was like, I think you owe me some money. And he was like, Everyone thinks I owe money. You're fired. <laughs> and so I was like, Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah. And then like a month later, I get a call from the improv. They're like, Oh, uh, John Panette wants you to open for him in Brea. And I was like, Okay. And so okay. I go there. And his driver is there and he sees me and he's like, hey, Mike, how are you? And I'm like, hey, weren't we fired? And he was like, oh, was that your first time getting fired by John? <laughs> he fires everybody. Don't worry about it. And I was like, oh, okay. And conversely, the opposite of that, the very first time I met him, I drove out to Phoenix to do the Phoenix improv. Mm-hmm. And I was going to be hosting that weekend. And he goes, okay. you're my host for the weekend? And I said, like, yeah. And he goes, here's $100 just right off the bat. Oh, wow. Mm. Then he goes, he had a plate of avocado. He goes, I, uh, I'm told this is the good fat, like me. <laughs> you know? And that weekend, he, uh, at the end of the weekend, it was sold out shows. He threw a pizza party for the entire staff, I love that. signed DVDs for everybody, wow. and tipped pretty much anyone that said anything to him the whole weekend. The sweetest guy. And I asked him, I was like, you're the nicest. I'd worked with a bunch of guys at that yeah. time. I was like, you're the nicest headliner I've worked with as far as like taking care of everybody. everybody. And yeah. he was like, oh, I got that from Mr. S. And I was like, who's Mr. S? Sinatra? He's like, Mr. Sinatra. Wow. And I was like, Jesus Christ. And then he told me the story <laughs> of how he got that gig, Yeah. which is one of the best stories I've heard in show okay, business. Okay, can we, which can we, is, can we, can we, can we? He was working for- We'll get K- back to the pickle foot story, but <laughs> this right. one. He was- 
he was working for Kenny Rogers at the time. He was wow. opening for Kenny Rogers. Okay. And Kenny Rogers would do a bit where he would throw Frisbees into the audience. And there was a balcony. How do you not love Kenny Rogers? And he goes, I'm pretty good with these. I'm going to try and get one up to the balcony. If it falls short, let it go. <laughs> like that. And Panette had written that joke for him. That's great. And so he loved John. He thought he was the greatest thing ever. But one night, the manager of the hotel happened to be in the room, and John accidentally let an F bomb out. Mm. Oh. Manager's like, it's a family show. We got to fire the kid. It, we can't mm. have it. We can't wow. have it here. We'd get sued, all sorts of stuff. And the, overreacted probably but mm -hmm. you know so kenny rogers has to fire him and he goes look i'm sorry i gotta let you go and he goes are you shitting me <laughs> <laughs> he was like i don't worry about it you're gonna land on your feet stay in the hotel the rest of the month we'll figure out something for you wow kenny the rogers rest of the kenny month? rogers says that holy wow. shit he gets he doesn't make it back to his hotel room before there's a message blinking this is Vic Pedicato over at Caesar's Palace. We Ooh. understand that you're available now to open yeah. for Mr. Sinatra. Would you have any interest in doing that? Kenny Rogers fired him and promoted him to the best gig in Vegas wow, for a comic at that incredible. time. that's incredible. How cool is that? Where he can say some F-bombs if he needs to Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw Panette open up for Sinatra. Did you really? Did you really? Yep. Wow. It was my 21st birthday present. It was at the Sands in Atlantic City. Wow. I was right on the stage. I couldn't, like, I was so excited to see Mr. S. Yeah. So of course, excited. Yeah. And then when Panette came out, I lost my mind. And then afterwards, he was just hanging out at the bar smoking a cigar. Yeah. And he, I remember he, I was like starstruck. And that was the night I decided to become a comedian. That and I was, was going to say, wow. you're more excited about, no offense to Panette, but you're more excited to, Panette yeah. and Sinatra. Well, no, I could. It was like the icing on the cake. Okay. Like, in all honesty, I was losing like you've my been kind of like resisting. I it couldn't up to believe then. it would yeah. be like when you're there to see Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant comes out of it, and you're right, like, you just faint. You yeah, just, just at that point, yeah. you just, just faint. But that's because, two yeah. of the same genre. That's right. what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I was a comedy separate... nerd. Like, got it. Okay. I remember thinking like, I always wanted to be a stand-up, but I thought you needed to have like special permission. And even when I moved that out here, so funny. I even put my dreams no, on training need, like, wheels. To be special. Yeah. Just have, you know special what? You just, needs. You just, as long as you special don't have a needs. backup plan. Yeah. Like I was talking to my buddy tonight, who's a former Navy SEAL. And he said, like, I, he was like, I was like, yeah, I just, I, if, if comedy didn't work out, it wasn't about making money or having a career. Sure. It was right. about finding peace of mind in this life. Yeah. Like, I knew I couldn't sit in a cubicle. I tried that. I tried my best. Oh, my God. And um, I knew I, when I did construction in college, Gino Verdecchio told me the truth. He goes, uh, your hands ain't never going to make you a living. <laughs> he goes, you better run back to them books. If that isn't the, the title of a book, your hands ain't never going to make, make you a living. No. He was honest with wow. me. Wow. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I probably, I, love the construction I probably dated guys, him, but, but yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> big Gene or little Gene? <laughs> <laughs> probably big. I go so big. wait, so did you get? Did you talk to him that night? Yes, and he signed me an autograph. I still have it somewhere. I think my older brother is the keeper of the treasures. Yeah, because like <laughs> I can't. But I remember the autograph. He said, "To Steve, see you at the buffet." John oh, my God. that's awesome. I love and it. He was, and I was like, "That guy is the cool." I, because yeah. in my brain, I knew, like, to answer your question. I was I was not more excited for John Panette than Frank Sinatra, but right. I knew there's no way this would ever be Frank Sinatra. Right, right, Do you know right, what I mean? Right. I'm like, yeah. I could be funny enough where I could be around it. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Does sure, that sure. make sense? Yeah, I yeah, was like, yeah, this guy yeah. gets to hang out with the coolest person that's ever yeah. Yeah. touched a microphone. It was it was a surreal experience. It, because Philadelphia, it's, Sinatra is up there with Rocky. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. I just did this video and I keep forgetting to post it, but I was in a supermarket in South Philly and there's pictures of Rocky everywhere. Like, why? Yeah. At the Acme. <laughs> I don't, it's hilarious, yeah. right? But it's just a weird, like, random above the meat 
why yeah. you know right. so and i keep he forgetting i gotta me. post it, it. it makes exactly. sense <laughs> but <laughs> but it, also sinatra was another mm. one even yeah. though he wasn't he was a jersey new yorky what you know yep. but he philly was so big we had fridays with frankie sunday with sinatra yep Sid and Mark. yeah yeah so sydney would play pika's in upper darby pennsylvania <laughs> i remember francis, the sponsors francis albert loved a lasagna down <laughs> and so my Primo and segundo my ravioli brother johnny company. Is in the shower, and you know we have the little row home, and there's ninety of us in this house. There's no, there was right, no yeah. bathroom door. There was a curtain, and we ripped that down too because we were just <laughs> you can't. You take, we have one bathroom. Get the fuck out of it, right? So we're always fighting. So Johnny's got the radio on, and I'm in and out of the bathroom getting stuff while Johnny's taking a shower, right? And <laughs> you know, Bill, everybody's moving around. I'm it's imagining like the beginning of Caddy crazy. Shack, <laughs> right? Yeah, who's this? You're gonna get yeah, exactly. Dennis. But what are we <laughs> running a restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> Dennis saw me naked. <laughs> but no doors. No doors. Oh, man. So everybody's running around, whatever. Johnny's listening to the Sunday with Sinatra, and he's taking a shower. Or it could have been Friday with Frankie because yep. he's taking a shower. He's going out, Lock right? The and so <laughs> Sydney's like, Francis Albert loved uh, he, what he would go for the chicken parmesan, maybe eggplant parmesan, but chicken parmesan. And he's he would, it's that long. In mm -hmm. And Johnny go in the shower, and he's going, Play the song, Sydney. Play the <laughs> fucking song. I'm crying, <laughs> laughing at my idiot brother losing it. Some say three million. <laughs> Some say four million. <laughs> ah, <laughs> That's what it was There's like. Summer wind. Ah. <laughs> Could you get? They would also play the song. Like you, you hear oh, the start so of it, good. and mm -hmm. Sydney still fucking talk, and Johnny just <laughs> loses it. A lovely arrangement <laughs> by Mister. <laughs> he knew everything. Oh yeah, yeah. It was so annoying when Francis Albert was in South Philadelphia, where he would go. <laughs> yeah. So it, it just it would come up with all the restaurant names, and we we didn't care. We just wanted to hear the song. I wonder if they're available anywhere. What those? Yeah, <laughs> those old radio shows. So, who great. was the host of this? Sydney, Sid Mark. Sid, Sid Mark. Mark. Wow. And Johnny, we just call him Sydney. <laughs> great. Play, Play the, the song. <laughs> Sydney. He fucking hated him. Yeah, we used to on Sundays when because we all lifeguarded at this pool across the street. That's just a, another pool. TV show for you. Uh, nobody I've ever met has more TV. I shows know. Than I you. just need a person to write them. And so, uh, Mike Black. I got nothing to do Friday. <laughs> there we go. We'll <laughs> do it. it all. We'll get it all out. So, but we would play. And we had this radio and. We would just play Sunday with Sinatra all day while lifeguarding. And there was a guy across the street. He said, that music's so loud. Like he was an old man. He was like, stop playing that racket. <laughs> Kids with the Because he was expecting. He like, would call the cops. And the cops. Oh, yeah, yeah. The for, cops yeah. would come. <laughs> All the time. And I'm surprised the, you guys didn't get tipped. Hey, it is for oh, playing Oh, no, the Frank. cops would come in and go, yeah, we just got to say we came to tell you to turn it down. The, it wasn't loud. It Philly would just echo. The yeah, they were great. <laughs> right. They were like, we know he's an old man. He, I, and we definitely killed him oh, from man. playing. I'm sorry, but he, you don't call the cops. You're, oh, you don't, rats yeah. don't go in our neighborhood, Stephen. <laughs> oh, I don't know call. this. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind my own business. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah that's, just so here that's to take me. out Father Flanagan. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just go. <laughs> it's truly the greatest place on earth. <laughs> oh my god. Um, but yeah, so that's awesome that Panette is who you. So that's the comic you saw that made you want. No, no, okay, so this is how God works, and this is why I, I believe my first comedian I ever saw was Mr. Dom Irera. Right, mm -hmm. and that was. You're you're saying live, live. Or in general, live at the Funny Wait, Bone on South Street. I was just gonna say okay. Funny Bone on South. Street. Funny Bone on South Street. It was right after he did Joey Bag of Donuts on the Young Comedian yes. Special. As the world's so small, there was a guy that used to work at the gym, my buddy Big Jack, that used to. He was a door guy there. He was like, I'm probably the guy that took the twenty bucks from your dad to let you in <laughs> underage. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh yeah, underage. Saw. I was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, you had to be 20. It's Philly. Um, Nobody's. So I got to see Dom Irera and become friends with him. That's very The cool. second comedian I ever saw was uh, Andrew Dice Clay. Right. Became my friend. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> third comedian I ever saw was John Panette, and I got to wow. be at least friendly with him. He was so sweet. You, you know what's weird? I think Dom might be the – he wasn't the first comic that I saw technically. Live or Live. just – Live, okay. but it was in Vegas. My mom took me – to the comedy store Riviera show. Holy shit. No, not Riviera. Or where were uh, she was at the Dunes. The Dunes, because it was it was Dom, Jimmy Walker, Hilarious. Tamayo Otsuki. Oh yeah. 
And Tamayo saw, we like, my mom hung out afterwards. She was like, we're not going to leave with the rest of the crowd. We're just going to wait. Mm -hmm. Cause she already knew that I wanted to do this. And she, Tamayo sees me and she's like, little boy. Hey, little boy. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. And I was Tamayo's like, the best. And I was like, I want to be a comedian. And she's like, oh, come backstage. And she, no. she had, she they so signed crazy. all, she introduced me to everyone. They signed my program. And that was, it was amazing. It was, you know how crazy that yeah. is, but also Tamayo was like that. Tamayo is exactly what Mitzi wanted. Yeah. She's, she was, she found Tamayo. She was going to develop Tamayo. She was going to make her a star. Mm -hmm. So she put her, uh, she's on uh, that people, when they see her uh, neon light, they go, yeah. who's Tamayo? Too good. I go, Mitzi's protege. <laughs> like yeah. this was, she was going to make her a huge star. And it just, I mean, she did everything. She got her close. She got her pretty close. Tamayo works a lot. She had some really funny material. Fucking hilarious. The joke about the Japanese propaganda during World War II. I'll say she maybe was like, yeah, just, <laughs> they weren't ready for it. Yeah. Does that Perhaps make sense? Ahead of her time. Yeah. Yeah, the, and the the joke was just like, on the radio, they were going, there's only four Americans left. We're winning. And I was like, Hilarious. what a great joke. Hilarious. Yeah. But she, she was she wild was awesome. like yeah. that. She was fun. She would, she would gamble. Like, when I first got here, she was kind of teetering out, like, not yeah. coming, and then she moved away. But, um, oh, my God, she was fucking hilarious she would crush yeah i've never seen her stuff and if I you just watch knew her of, old i knew of the legend yeah. mitzi has all recordings from yeah. audio recordings from those from shows, those days yeah from the dunes wow i don't know if peter and paulie uh, put them because uh paulie said he was gonna digitize them whatever like put them so, so they cool. can't because they're on yeah. tape, actual we're working on it Oh, got it. Oh, Actual that okay. tapes. Yeah, 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 I was like, we're, 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 I forgot you were listening, Lee. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're working on on digitizing all that stuff. Actually. Yeah, it's, it's bizarro that they have all. That's they've seen some of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's amazing. It's yeah. like you're like the Whoa. archives that they have. Yeah, she used to, because when I would be at her house all day, she, that's what she would make me put. She, first, we were gonna write a book, and I was like, you know, I can barely read. Anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Coffee book. Dude, yeah, but how great is that, that Mitzi loved you so much? Oh, we would sit yeah. on her floor and just go through everything in, in her room, downstairs. Mm. It was so much fun. I mean, you did it too. Mm. We did. I was just telling a story about, and I, I was making, you know, Keith Robinson. Yeah. yeah. So he's a South Philly guy. Yeah. One of my favorite people on the planet. And we were talking about Mitzi, and I was telling him the story. And me and Rick have told this story a million times, but I don't know if you guys remember it. There was comics would show up at her house during the day when she was oh, kind yeah. of, her health yeah, yeah, was declining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one comic, he showed up and he was like, you know, I think I should be getting better spots. And Mitzi's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 and he's like, I just think I'm not being showcased properly. You know, that kind of pushy shit. And I'm just like, mm. what is and I'm not a comic at this point. I'm just right. her assistant. And I'm just like, what the fuck is this idiot doing? Right. Yeah. He's already mediocre. Yeah. And then he pushes. She goes, OK, so we'll just do another showcase on Sunday. OK. <sighs> so she showcased him. He bombs his tits off hard yeah. and then she goes okay so we're just gonna not use you anymore she unpassed wow. that motherfucker. <laughs> i know it was you fredo <laughs> i just remember being like i guess he won't be coming uh. at the house because <laughs> a That's lot of why them I just keep my, up. i keep my head down i keep my mouth <laughs> Do down. Your right. shit. Yeah. and i go whatever just comes my way shit. is gonna come yeah. i'm not Don't. like one of those go-getters like hey i'm gonna <laughs> yeah, leverage yeah, yeah, this yeah. relationship i'm like <laughs> I'm a middle child. I'm just happy. Like, oh, I can have the okay. Like, yeah, I've never seen anyone have a strategy here. No, that has panned out into their benefit. I remember once you know? Mitzi telling me and there was another comic there. This is in her home, mm. and uh, sometimes she would just let out gems. Oh, and I'm just like, unbelievable. Let it go. Yeah, yeah. And she was like, I don't even need because he was like, she said, I don't even need to see you on stage. I can just look at you and know if you got it or not. Yep. And now, like, after being 24 years in, you kind of can. You can. Yeah. You yeah, kind of yeah, can, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. But then I remember this other, I'll tell you his name off the air, but he was like, <laughs> speaking of showcases, Mitzi, uh, what do you look for when somebody showcases? I think I know who and that is. She honestly had her toothpick and she looked, it was like <laughs> a scene from The Office. Like, she takes the toothpick out and looks at me. And then goes back to him, wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> yeah, that's her favorite. Wouldn't you like to know, huh? It was great. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was the best. Like when Mitzi felt close enough to you to have laughs with you. Oh, yeah. You felt like the most important person in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. It, it just was like, oh my God, she's making jokes. And she would tell me some fucking wild stories. And I'd be like, oh shit, I think her pills are kicking it. You oh, know, like, start, start, uh, start telling you people's secrets. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah, like, crazy. And I'm oh, like, yeah, a don't bounty think... on his head from the cartel. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, whoa, I don't want it. It's none of my business. <laughs> yeah, there was a cobra in his bed in Vegas. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. She would have all this wild what, shit. What a great way everything. for a comedian to die. <laughs> that would be you know, killed by a cobra. Just put pet. it out of the universe. I don't want that to happen. <laughs> yeah. Hear about Simone pit by a cobra. <laughs> As soon as he started to make a decent living. <laughs> <laughs> he got he his folks that house, and the next thing you know... <laughs> Some that people say it was his dad. He wanted peace yeah. and quiet in the beach house. <laughs> <laughs> no more making fun of me at the dinner table. <laughs> Y'all laugh at my expense. That's what my mom always says. It's a real story. I, I get did. it. It's funny because of me, right? I did, I did Sickler's podcast, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. And we're going to release it when my special comes out. Great. But I didn't know my... I was on speakerphone. And I shared the funniest. I will not share it here. So no, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, we'll it was the it funniest second. thing I've lived through in my childhood. Okay. Right? okay. Like if it was in a movie, you wouldn't believe it. Right. But hilarious. Right. Yeah. Ta- so it just him came write out. a movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it just came out naturally in conversation. Okay. But I, I even told to, I go, look, I started, I go, you might have to edit this out. But <laughs> let's just get it on tape. Okay. On okay, tape. okay. So right away, I, I mean, it, Sick. We're every this everybody's crying. Right. Yeah. Laughing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, uh oh, I gotta clear this one. So I call home, and I'm like, hey mom, papa, papa. I didn't know I was on speakerphone, and I go, look, I'm gonna need to talk to dad because I just told a story. Well, which one? And I go, <laughs> like, and then I'm I didn't and I hear my dad's 80 years old here in the background. F that S. <laughs> F that S. Why do I always got to be the funny one? That's an embarrassment that happens to you. You're the effing comedian. Why don't you talk about stuff that you're embarrassed about? Why do I have to be the butt of the effing joke? Write something. Don't, aren't some comedians, he's like, aren't some comedians creative? They talk about their own life. You Sucker. Oh, that's yeah. Your dad great. just did a yeah. tight seven uh, minutes oh, on you. Murder, <laughs> murder. It was like years of rage coming yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why it's gotta be me? <laughs> I'm like, oh, all right. I guess we'll edit that out, Dad. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. yeah. My mom always says, go ahead, go on stage and tell them. Anything that happens, I dare you to tell this story. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yeah. And I do. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> why, you're the, that's why yeah. people are showing up from Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you put us up front this for the Eric, uh, Eleanor Kerrigan set? <laughs> it made that, me so happy. They were like legit fans. I know, in the main And they were like, right? they gave me a look. Oh. I'm like, oh, yeah. They were like, you know her? <laughs> Isn't that one of the weird things about comedy being so popular right now? Yeah. It, also, I was uh, when you get young people, that freaks me out. Not freaks yeah. me out, but like it's cool. Like it's, I'm Dude, shocked. These, I guess. Right. Kids, Gen yeah, Z yeah, yeah. kids were high fiving me when I got off stage right. tonight. You're like, wait, what? So I was at my nephew turned 21. So we did, wow. uh, we had a big party in Philly last week. And so I'm at he the party. He had his first drink? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Um, so he, uh, anyways, well, he's got all his friends. You know, they're all, the boys are, it was the NFL draft. So the oh. boys are watching the draft. The girls are over here. I was like, what? That's what? great. This is, you're 21. At yeah. this point, somebody should be pregnant. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> right, yeah. And so if, if, if my nephew goes, you know, can you come over? My friend wants to say hi to you. He's a big fan. I go, what? Like, I was just shocked. Like, you're a little so friend? <laughs> Your and then he friend. was the cutest, and he was like, "Oh wow, hi, hey, uh, hey, uh, uh, yeah, I saw, I, uh, I saw you on um, uh, uh, Kill Tony, and and oh, and, and, and so you know awesome. uh, Cam, and 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 do you know like he was just so I was like, oh my god, he, he brought up everybody. I was like, yeah, he's doing the Chris Farley show he, with he her. Was so <laughs> nervous. He awesome. was so cute. I was like, oh my god, should I sleep with him? I no, I didn't. He wasn't twenty one yet, and <laughs> he was still twenty. Checking IDs. All right, get in the bed. <laughs> Let me see that ID. Uh, but yeah, it was, just, it was like really cute. And then the whole night he was just like, hey. It's the best. <laughs> so I walked by. Hey. <laughs> so cute. She's feeling that heat. I was like, I want to tackle him. He's so cute. Um, but yeah, I like that. I like, you know. And then it's also you're in Philly and it's like, you know, my nephews are like, why do you come in and out so much? And then they don't understand what I do. Yeah. Really, yeah. It's what the 12-year-old is really all my Conrad. That's my... 
his mm. little brother, the oops baby. But we, he's always like, so what, you tell jokes? And I go, yeah. And then I go, I'm going to come to your school and do it. You know, you can't do that. <laughs> no. Like all of a sudden, you're like, no. <laughs> little Catholic school. Terrible let me come idea. in there. Let me come in there and tell some <laughs> shit. <laughs> I went to that school. Yeah, it's the best. So I love it. Um, but it is neat. Do you, does your family support your family was into you doing stand up? I know yours so. was. Yeah. Um, mostly my uh, middle brother. He watched me watching Mork and Mindy <laughs> as a little kid. I love this. And I was enjoying it so much that he was like, Mike, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I was like, I want to do that. And he was like, he looked at me like Beef I was so space. stupid. <laughs> yeah. And, and that was his response. He was like, Mike, you can't be an nanny, alien. Nanny. I was like, no, but what he's he's pretending to be one. I want to pretend for a living. Oh. And he was like, okay. And then he started bringing home video cassettes of comics wow. and albums back when there were like comedy albums. Yeah, what a cool brother. And he would play those. Then he got a job at a movie theater that had 16 screens. <laughs> and he was like, after school, come watch movies and hang out at my job. That's and awesome. He, That's great. My dad had like one rule with comedy because he's like from the 50s. Yeah. He was like, no Cheech and Chong. That was the only like house oh. rule. Do not bring Cheech and Chong in the house because reefer madness very and all that. And smoke grass. And, and that was, it was almost like he was inviting <laughs> them to bring Cheech and Chong. Like I saw all the Cheech and Chongs of course, by and the time the I was like seven. Ain't and no and I was like trying to identify with other kids. And I'm like, I just see the last Cheech and Chong. And they're like, what are you talking oh, about? Was, we haven't seen any of these things. There was no, nothing better than on telling on your parents. <laughs> going to school. Anybody check out Richard Pryor live on the Sunset Strip Saturday? <laughs> you saw that? It's pretty yeah, great. Yeah. What am I, a nerd? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Your parents let you see it? My mom would always say, don't watch this. Don't watch that. And then she... She fell asleep. She was a heavy sleeper. So we were like, <laughs> yeah, Panama. watching everything. Do my parents would let. OK, so this is they were so cool. But then when it would become too adult, was the well, babe, this my mouse. This is getting adult. Yeah, it's getting too adult. My, it was the old cable boxes where you clicked. Yeah. yeah. And my dad would change the <laughs> yeah, channel. The can, you, yeah. can you tell the Caddyshack story? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So my point being that we'll just finish up with stand up. Okay, yeah, yeah, sorry. There was always we'd watch stuff but then the channel would always get changed. Yeah, okay. And, I, and in my little kid brain I was always like what are they saying that I can't see? Why yeah, can't yeah, I yeah, see yeah. this? <laughs> and then I remember when I getting older Sometimes my dad wouldn't change the channel, and then I would get embarrassed. I'm like, Dad, change yeah. the channel. Mom's right here. I don't yeah. want her watching that. I can't. Uh, this guy's great. I'm like, Dad, change it. Give me the box. <laughs> so when I record, I just recorded my special in front of literally all ages, five o'clock show from two year olds to 90 year olds. I, I don't even know how you do that, but that it's amazing. It was, but it felt so good. To, I, my goal was always to put a special where the parents didn't have to change it. But the kids would. Okay. Wow. Kids Bill would Cosby did that. We watched Bill Cosby himself oh. a billion Jeffrey, times. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Jeffrey. Yeah. <laughs> He's, yeah, it was just, uh, we would do it all day. In this, in this, in this pop me and my behind. Yeah, we so loved great. it. The it chocolate upset. cake. Yeah. That, that whole bit. That is oh, great. great. Give us, Give us chocolate, chocolate cake. cake. <laughs> but you could watch it. Your parents didn't turn it off. Yeah, that was but the But Pryor and Eddie Murphy, my mother would just shake Carlin. her head. Dice yeah. was in the basement. Oh. Johnny would play Dice in the basement. I remember that was... going to the record store, me and my little brother, because we saw Dice on the Young Comedian special. And yeah, then when yeah. he had a tape come out, I was like, how much do you have? Yeah, yeah. He was like, I got four on it. <laughs> he took out his sock money. Put it on layaway. Yeah, like, and then we put we'll our money back. together. And then my mom picks us up from the mall. Yeah. And we're like, okay. And she, where are you boys going? No, I've got to do homework. We ran upstairs to our room and played dice. Flip it, flip it, flip the tape. <laughs> flip it, flip it. <laughs> it was so, what's the going on in there? And then my dad's like <laughs> leaning in the doorway. This guy's great. This guy's great. What are you boys doing up there? Mind your business, babe. <laughs> I'm having the talk. <laughs> he did it for me. <laughs> It was awesome. <laughs> so great. Getting the contraband. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then so good. Ten years later in his backyard, you want cheese on your burger? Yeah, and then we're like, then we're avoiding his calls. Uh, come on, yeah. man. It's a lot. And we to I torture him. <laughs> He's the best. Um wait, so what is this caddy shack? All right, I'll do the short version. I know. He's not gonna do pickle feet. We may yeah. as well get caddy shack. You gotta out get of something out of you. So Caddyshack was like those eighties comedies were just 
amazing. I know yeah. people think they're like controversial, but really it's just it was so a that's different just how people talk. That's just that's how all. it was. Yeah. Funny. Can't yeah. you just yeah. laugh? Exactly. Just try to enjoy your life a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Not exactly. A, 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 like it, not, uh, just, it, it, it. The goal is joy and laughing. <laughs> that's right. So anyway, my dad let us watch that. And there were a couple times like my mom would have to co she'd cover our eyes. Oh yeah, yeah. There right. was some titties scenes. and that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Or like you got to like the language, language. Oh, that, all right, whatever. But we get the <laughs> shack, and put a lot of the. A lot of the stuff little kids aren't going to get. Yeah, it's over your head. you're not supposed sure. to get. It's over your head. Yeah. Like, I remember watching Fast Times at Richmond High thinking Hamilton got caught tinkling. <laughs> no. Right. Forever. Yeah, because yeah, I was a kid when I saw I it. I think I, I had too many on. brothers. I already knew what he was doing. <laughs> you knew damn well when he was. <laughs> so, that face. That's the face of it, too. It's a... <laughs> I got to get my life together. Animals. <laughs> Go ahead. So. So at the end of the movie Caddyshack, mm -hmm. this is true. You remember when Rodney goes, come on, we're all going to get laid. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and they yeah, yeah, kick yeah. on Journey and it's just joyful. It's a great ending. Great. You know? <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. I'm not, I'm just in so caught up. I don't even think to question. I'm not that smart of a kid. <laughs> right. But my little brother, he's truly a genius. So he didn't understand why the big celebration when he said the word laid. Okay. So my brother goes, he, and Mark was probably six. And he goes, dad, what's laid mean? <laughs> My dad's like, what are you talking about, buddy? Because remember, Ronnie Dangerfield just said, come on, we're all going to get laid. And he goes, no. <laughs> he no, no, no. He, goes, he said, come on, we got it made. Come on, everybody, we got it made. He goes, no, he didn't. <laughs> he goes, no, he sure did. And it was a videotape. So my little we brother rewinded it. it. And, he goes, and he's like, look, come on, we're going to get laid. La, 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 laid. He, <laughs> he says, laid. What's laid mean? La, la, my la. mom was like, you finally did it, Russ. Yeah. Right? So my dad, real quick. So angry at him. No, but my oh. dad, real quick, he diffused it. He goes, oh, that's an old timey expression. It means to have a good time. Wow. Boom, right away. Okay. Boom. That means to have a good time. And technically, he didn't lie. Right? And that's right. what I love about yeah. my dad's no. answer. Yeah. Right, so now my older brother's six years old. I'm seven. You're gonna use it, yeah, because we think it means to have a good time. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, maybe three years later, we've been saying this <laughs> for years. And then my friend Jason Showers, his mom, God bless her, had a van. I remember she had the license plate holder that said, "I live for uh, paydays, weekends, and vacations." Right, <laughs> and she's picking us up. It's the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Oh, right, man. so we have a half day of school and we go to the mall because it's the 80s. My mom drops off. Jason's mom picks up. That's hilarious. So Mrs. Shaw, real sweet, prim and proper lady from the South. She was from Louisiana. And pick, and she was so excited to see my little brother because he was still at like elementary school cute. Mm -hmm. right? Oh, Mark, yeah. I didn't know you were joining us, right? So you boys have any plans for this holiday? And like Jason was like, oh, I want to hit her son. And then what about you, Steve? And I'm like, well, then, and then my little brother goes, I don't care what happens as long as I get laid. <laughs> she goes, what did you say? <laughs> and, and he goes, I don't care what happens. I just want to get laid this weekend. <laughs> and she was like, what are you saying? And he goes, I've been really stressed out at school. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I want to do this weekend is get laid. Hey, man, I hope he did. <laughs> <laughs> Did she, was she just calm about it? Like, no, it was a phone call home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause I was going to say, and then the yeah, worst part about that's the absolute worst. And I'm not going to go into details cause it's far too painful to share. <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, no. I can't, I'm not doing this, but <laughs> it's the, it's the button on this story. Got you have it. To, you so have fast to tell forward it now. decades, decades no. later. No, it's so bad. It's too late. So We're already here. So my brother's here. getting married, right? <laughs> and I had been around you people for too long. I forget right. how normal society right, functions. Right, 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 right. And my brother's like, hey, man, he's the successful one. He's marrying the perfect woman. And, I mean, I grew up with brothers. I'm a comedian. I forget how... I have no idea what to a act. wedding really means yes. to somebody. <laughs> right. And I'm just proud of myself because I'm not drunk. I'm like, right. I, I'd given up drinking and I'm like, I'm not. At my older brother's wedding, I took a Congo line through the kitchen in the bathroom, <laughs> like Delco dirt. You yeah, know? yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, <laughs> pure this garbage. Is a, a yeah, beautiful yeah. place in North Carolina, <laughs> up in the mountains. I mean, yeah. It is a perfect wedding. My younger brother's just like, hey, man, 
if you could just get to the wedding, that's the, he goes, get to the <laughs> wedding. Cause I'm like, I had no money. I'm a broke comedian. Yeah, 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 sure. I remember I had to cash in all my airline miles to get there. Mm. I get there. He wound up paying for my room because he knew I was broke. And he goes, okay. the only gift I want is a best man speech. <gasps> and I'm like, okay. And then he was like, but I don't want Chris's feelings to get hurt. So work on it. So me and Chris don't ever work on it. And it Naturally. was like, it was like Seinfeld and Costanza trying to write the pilot. We did everything <laughs> but. So then the night before, we're like, we have to do this speech and we're getting nowhere. Right. Yeah. It is terrible. Yeah, yeah. And then I'd never done like a comedy team. <laughs> I'd never no, done like a none of us team. have. Yeah, I, I'd never done that. <laughs> yeah, and then my brother, I'm like, you're. So I could tell we're bombing. So I decide to tell the story about Mark saying we're all gonna get laid <laughs> in the best man speech. I ruined. I mean, not in a nightclub, <laughs> not at the comedy store at 1 a.m. when I was going up at that time. That, that's as dirty as my comedy got. Right? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, and I'm doing it on. My sister-in-law's biggest day of her life, <laughs> ruining a wedding. It was the worst feeling. I, 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 I get my claustrophobic. Oh, I wish a therapist it. was here watching oh, you right so now. This meltdown bad. is great. Oh, but the best thing about it was when I apologized to Brooke that night, she was really cool about it. And I'm like, well, I guess this is one way to figure out what you're dealing with. <laughs> you know what, I mean? what you're marrying into. Yeah. Yeah. You excited but about man, this? It was wow. so bad. Did anybody laugh? Her one uncle that was great. <laughs> he was like, you hear that? He's getting right. He don't know what it means. <laughs> and then he was like ostracized at his table. <laughs> and he's got like six cocktails in him later. And he's like, I'm going to go cheer this guy up. <laughs> Buddy, when you say it, get laid, what do you think I'm saying? He goes, these people all got to stick up their ass. I don't know. <laughs> that was hilarious. Can I get you a drink? And I'm like, I don't feel like drinking. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. I, so bad. They're still together? Oh, yeah. That's perfect. They're there awesome. It worked. That's all it was matters. a success. He's getting laid. <laughs> you know? <sighs> you realized I you were bombing. said that. And you pulled it out, you know, you you fixed oh, it. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You saved their marriage. Somebody, it's like I old school. It, when, I, <laughs> we're going straight in. No, no. The, the, what he said, I'll tell you what love is. <laughs> and <laughs> that's it. He takes the mic from him. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Come out at 2 a.m. You yeah. find your wife. <laughs> <laughs> and then the reverb on the mic is the, one of the funniest. Yeah. You're, you're beautiful. <laughs> you're beautiful. Like <laughs> So good. <laughs> what is this you're Nicotine. taking? Nicotine pills? It's lozenges. Oh, I'm gonna go smoke a cigarette. I think two it's milligrams. Just, I'd, I'd just rather smoke. I would. I would used to chew the nicotine gum, and then you have to get rid of it. Yeah. Are they flavored, or is yeah. it just nicotine flavored? Jerry, yeah. And then the thing is, you don't. There's no cleanup. Not with the pouches. Got it. Not with the gum. It's got like it. Stabbing somebody with an ice pick. You don't have to get rid of the weapon. It melts. <laughs> oh gone. wow! I like that's great. That's a great. Uh, I like that other part. Let's get rid of the weapons. Let's try to invent <laughs> something where the invent. The, the weapons just there disappear. No they just melt. <laughs> just you, you drop it and it I'm just... I'm Mr. Freeze, my... <laughs> uh, well, all right. Where can people find you, Steve Simone? Uh, Not that they want to come to your house and, you know, and eat. <laughs> see what your dad's doing. Uh, the best. <laughs> they would love it. My parents would love oh My, my dad, whenever comedians come over the house, my dad, because he sleeps so much because he's old and cute. <laughs> He wakes up like the little kid in Jerry Maguire. <laughs> Remember when the yes, little yes. kid comes out to see his, like, what's going on? There's there's guests in the house. <laughs> you said fuck. You know how the human head weighs <laughs> eight pounds? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tony Hitchcock came over and he's like, did you know the human head weighs eight pounds? <laughs> Dogs and bees can smell fear? Okay, Dad. <laughs> Your mom made uh, me Ari's lasagna. Ari's sleeping over. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I just want to stay in the house. He's like, I'm just going to go for a walk. My dad's like, you want some company? And Ari's like, yeah. I guess. Come on, man. Uh, I imagine Ari being like Gandalf in this, the Hobbit Shire when he's he has to like duck his head in to get it. Ari's the sweetest <laughs> it, 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 The most crazy, but also people don't realize the heart. The, the heart. sweetest person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He is I mean, to I'll this day my forever. mom's favorite comedian. She says no. that in front of me. <laughs> she goes, "Ari's my favorite." Steve Simone is right up there with him, oh, but Ari is my that's favorite. That's <laughs> disgusting. Your mom's cool. <laughs> She's cool. But no, he he really is. But your your mom made me lasagna, and meatballs, and I, 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 I enjoyed it so much. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I get booked at side splitters, I'm yeah, going. You have, to, you have to come out to the house. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna to. rent a car and I'm gonna do it. 
Because I like, but she's got all the she's got all the restaurant to go boxes. Mm-hmm. That's how many people she. Feeds. That's I swear. I was like, is this a to go box? And I went to Publix <laughs> the next day, and I'm like, this is the same to go box. Yep. Simone's mom has a. All she's right. not playing any games. No, she's got it going on. So okay, so you uh, you have a special coming yeah, out. When gonna, is that? Uh, we're in post production now. Okay, I think it this might is going to be a while. Oh, so. perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's called Best Night Ever, and it's like. <gasps> The type of comedy you can, like, you can have your grandmother watch. Like, mm. when I do meet those Gen Z kids and mm-hmm. they're like, oh, my gosh, you do. I'm like, you probably won't like me. Yeah. But your grandparents will think I'm awesome. No, I remember <laughs> my brother Bobby loving you because you did the bunk bed thing and lava. Really? Your and mom loved shit. me. My mom. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I remember uh, that. It was so, it was, it, they loved you. They were like, we, we were both opening for Dom Irera in Philly. So they all came. Gets. And my brother It all Bobby comes was, back to Dom Irera. It all does. All roads lead to Mr. <laughs> Dom Irera. got me hired here. Because I knew who he was. And Mitzi goes, he's from Philadelphia. So she hired me. Hilarious. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, but oh, you're online. You have a... Yeah, uh, where's awesomesteve.com. It coming out? It's coming out on YouTube? Mm, there's a new network called like Merit Street. I don't... Honestly, okay. I know nothing. Not yet. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. We'll take... We'll wait. Just follow me. Go to awesomesteve.com because my Steve Simone comedy... Nobody knows spells my last name right, but there's a link on that. So go to oh, awesomesteve.com. Smart. smart. And then my social media is there. And then when the special comes out, I'll promote it. Great. And great, you can, great. like I said, like it's not that funny, but for like families Excuse and stuff, me? it's pretty good. I'm sure it's funny. Yeah. I'm sure it's hilarious. Mike I, Black, where can people find you? I'll be here this green jacket tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow night. I'll be at the comedy store. Okay, but store. this is coming out in a couple Oh, in a few weeks. Right, yeah. Who knows Just where I'll your be? Just social media. <laughs> Helping out of town in trouble. Um, no, on social media, uh, Mike Black is back on Instagram is really the only one that matters. I, yeah, I'm yeah. real lazy about all the rest of them, but that one I do a lot of stuff. Oh, okay, there. good, good, you good. You can follow links. Perfect. Or what have you. <laughs> Perfect. Well, like, subscribe, follow these guys, and um, keep checking out. I don't know if you've already done it, but keep checking out my special on the Comedy Store YouTube channel, and it's called No Country for Old Women. Such a great yeah. title. Uh, and thank you so much. Like and subscribe. Thank you guys for coming. I, love I appreciate you guys. it. You're the best. Will you guys like and subscribe? Yeah. Yes. Yes.